What's going on guys? Thanks for tuning back in to another fly tying tutorial. Today we're going to be tying up a fly called the BioBiot. So I'm going to get a fresh hook in the vise and we're going to get right into this tutorial. The hook we're tying this fly on is our Fly Fiend 350WG. This is our jig hook. This is in a size 14. And I have that paired up with a 3mm slotted tungsten bead in the color copper. The thread we're going to be using is just some UTC 70 denier. This is in a brown olive. And I'm going to start my thread right behind that bead, building up a little bit of a thread dam just to keep that bead in place. Now I'm going to dress my hook down to where the barb would be on a regular barbed hook. The first material we'll be tying in is our tail, which is going to be some Coque de Leon. And I'm going to grab about three to four fibers here, keeping them as straight as possible off the stem. And I'm going to tie in a tail about the size of the body. So I'm trying to keep these fibers right on top of that shank, just like so. Now I'm just going to bring my thread up the shank to behind the back of that bead. I can come in, just cut out those little curly ends. The next material we're tying in is our rib, and for that we're just going to be using some UTC Ultra Wire. This is in uh, black. What I like to do is actually just stick the wire in the back of this bead. And what that's going to do is just going to help so the uh, the thread doesn't want to spin around on the hook. This helps it uh, secure a little bit better. I'm going to tie this wire in on the side of the shank facing towards the camera. Just like so. Now for our body, we're going to be using a turkey biot. And this particular color is blue winged olive. So I'm just going to prep this biot. The easiest way that I find to tie these in and uh, keep it consistent um, wraps is I like to tie it in with the curvature facing inward. So these turkey biots have a natural curvature um, on the stem. So they, uh, as you can see here, they kind of curve on the stem coming out. So I actually turn that and uh, face it towards the, uh, so there's a curvature to it. And I actually just turn that so it's facing in. And um, that's the easiest way that I find to uh, wrap them in. And um, I think it works really well. It's really easy to uh, make nice even uh, wraps as well. So I'm just going to grab my hackle pliers here, grab this turkey biot, and I'm just going to make these wraps up the body. Just trying to keep a nice even space. I can bring my thread around. Tie that off. Come with my scissors. Cut that out. I'm just going to make a couple more wraps here just to secure it nice and tight. Now what I'm going to do is grab my wire here and I'm going to come underneath the body 
And all I'm gonna do is follow this channel in between these ridges all the way up the fly. And that's just gonna hold down that turkey biot so it doesn't rip out. It's gonna add a lot of strength to it. And it's also adding a little bit more segmentation to the fly. So I can just bring that up, tie it off, helicopter this wire out. Just like so. Let's clean that up just a bit. Now we're gonna tighten a little bit of CDC. And this is some Super Select CDC. This is uh, just pretty much all nice, nice uh, CD, uh, CDC fibers. So everyone you grab out of here, you know it's gonna be uh, a quality, quality CDC. It's a little bit more expensive, but uh, saves a lot of time rather than uh, digging through a whole bag of CDC trying to find a nice one. So it's only a couple bucks more, but uh, if you can get your hands on some of this, I definitely recommend it. So the way I like to prep my CDC feathers for collars is I'm just stripping all the fibers off the left side. So it's just all bare stem on the left side. And the reasoning for that is uh, it lays a lot nicer that way and um, you have less, uh, less fibers being trapped. So with this, uh, with the CDC, I like to try to keep it um, as free as possible and um, just don't overdo it because it uh, does hold water. I'm trying to get my hackle pliers on the stem. So it does hold water. Um, but uh, I find if you just wrap it in twice with a bare stem, that's plenty of, uh, of fibers for the fly. And I feel like they're spread out enough that they don't, um, they don't bunch up rather than just uh, spinning it once with uh, double sided. And after you tie a couple, you'll know what I'm talking about. It's uh, it's a lot easier to kind of work with. So I'm just gonna grab all these little fibers. One thing I do want to mention is don't overdo with the CDC. You don't need much. I see a lot of people just uh, caking it in there. But I mean, you only need eight fibers, eight to 10 fibers. Just enough to get some water through there. Create some air pockets. And I think uh, if you have too much, it just, it's just like a, um, a ball of water pretty much going through the, the uh, like the run or the riffle or whatever you are fishing. So uh, yeah, just two little wraps there and uh, you'll be good to go. So right now, I'm just gonna make a little dubbing loop. And we're gonna throw in a little uh, collar here. We're just gonna be using a little bit of this uh, SLF uh, squirrel spiky dub. And this is a uh, in natural fox. And you can also use a uh, hare's ear. That'd be uh, another good um, alternative but I just like this stuff because it has a little bit of synthetic in it so it has a little bit of sheen in it and it also has a little bit of flash and uh, this flash is almost like kind of like a yellowy um, olive I think it matches really well with the uh, with the bead and the body and the uh, CDC so I'm just gonna put a nice little uh, pinch in here I want it really thin because I want this to uh, flow nice through the water. So I'm just gonna pull out all the little extra guys that wanna come out. And what I'm gonna do is just kind of pull back on it 
and just wrap it in front of each other just like so. I can grab my thread here, tie off that dubbing loop, snip that out. Now I'm kind of just going to pull back all this material, throw some nice wraps in front of all that just so I don't have anything sticking out. I grab my whip finish tool, throw in a nice four or five turn whip finish, pull down on that, make sure it's nice and tight. I cut that out. Now I like to just kind of go through this with my finger and uh, kind of trim up some of these CDC fibers. Ideally, you want them to be about the length of the whole fly, so they end right about the uh, the tail. And uh, yeah, just kind of come through here with your nail. I uh, don't advise cutting it with scissors because you don't want a perfectly straight um, cut down. It just doesn't look natural. So uh, just try to put a little bit of taper into it and it, uh, it'll look a lot more natural going through the water. So if uh, you Euro Nymph, this is awesome pattern for that. I uh, primarily Euro Nymph, so um, a lot of these CDC flies are making their way into my box. I've already tied up a couple dozen of these in different colors. I also tie one with a uh, brown, brown turkey biot and uh, brown CDC and kind of a uh, mahogany uh, spiky dub. I think that looks really well looks really good as well, but uh, this is my favorite color Combo and I think it's going to do really well in the spring So if you have any questions about the fly or any of the materials you can drop that down in the comment section below If you want to see all the materials I used in this fly you can check that in the description Subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet Thanks a lot again for watching guys, and we'll see you in the next one